A very warm good morning, everyone. ICF Central Institute of Fisheries Technology. Welcome you all to the webinar on engineering interventions in post harvest fishery sector conducted to observe our Asadi Kamal Mahalso India at 75th Independence. This webinar is also a part of national campaign on fish for health and drought treaty to popularize conception of fish for improving health of citizens. So we have around A very warm good morning, everyone. ICF Central Institute of Fisheries Technology. Welcome you all to the webinar on engineering interventions in post harvest fishery sector conducted to observe our Asadi Kamal Mahalso India at 70th Independence. This webinar is also a part of national campaign on fish for health and drought treatment to popularize conception of fish for human health of citizens. So we have around very long to the webinar. ICF Central Institute of Fisheries Technology. Welcome you all to the webinar. Thank you. 
sorry for the interruption. Uh, so we have around 300 registered participants, uh, undergraduate and postgraduate students and researchers from various engineering and technology streams across institutes all over India. And also we have scientists and researchers from various ICR institutes. On the behalf of ICR and ICR CAFT, I welcome all the participants to this webinar. And I appreciate each and everyone for joining in this campaign and raising the awareness of Fish for Health and Prosperity. So let us start the webinar with the introductory remarks from the director, ICR CAFT, and the organizer of this webinar, Dr. Leela Edwin. I request Madam to share some thoughts on the subject. Yeah. Thank you, Neetu. Good morning to all. Heads of Division of CIFT, scientists in charge of research centers, uh, my colleagues, participants from outside, researchers, students, ladies and gentlemen, once again, a warm welcome to the webinar on engineering interventions in post-harvest sec fishery sector. As you know, ASA the Kamardha Mahulsav is an important initiative of the government of India to celebrate 75 glorious years of India's independence. The Indian Council of Agriculture Research actually is conducting national campaigns on various themes in agriculture to bring awareness among the stakeholders. As part of this, CIFT is organizing a national campaign on fish for health and prosperity. And today, stocks will be part of these, this celebrations. As you know, fish is very important and one of the healthiest food available. It is palatable and it is easily digestible and very nutritious because it contains rich proteins, fats, and many important nutrients and minerals. As you know, fish uh, consumption also has been increasing because of the growing importance of fish in nutrition. Coming to CIFT, CIFT has, worked, has been working for the past 65 years on various aspects of harvest and post-harvest technology of fish. From sustainable harvesting and responsible fishing, we have been doing tremendous work on value addition, modern packaging systems, waste utilization. We have been looking into the quality and safety of food, developing uh, fish processing mach machinery and equipment, and through our various training programs, national and international, we have been reaching out to different corners of the country and different parts of the developing world. So today's talks by Dr. George Nainan and Dr. Murali will be emphasizing on the importance of fish in nutrition and also about the important in engineering interventions that CFT has made in this sector. I welcome all the participants once again and thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam, for the thoughtful message. Now we will have a talk on the theme of this webinar, National Campaign on Fish for Health and Prosperity by Dr. George Nainan, HOD Engineering, ICSAFT, and coordinator of this webinar. Thank you, uh, Director, and uh, thank you all participants and colleagues. A very warm good morning to all of you. As uh, Director has already indicated, ICRCFT is conducting this uh, national level programs as a part of our Asadika Amar We are having a series of programs. Uh, to start with, we already started with the programs on different aspects of uh, uh, harvest and post-harvest sector of fisheries technology. And uh, as a part of that, the engineering division of ICR CFT is also conducting this web webinar with a specific topic on engineering interventions in post-harvest fisheries technology. Uh, but our team is actually Fish for Health, Wealth and Prosperity. That is a national theme for this webinar as a part of Asadi Kapa Council. So as an introductory, uh, presentation. We will have a 15 minutes presentation on the different aspects of uh, the uh, fish as an uh, important source of nutrition and health. So let me start my presentation, that general presentation on fish for health, wealth and prosperity now. 
uh, we, I will share my screen and uh, this will be a 15 minutes presentation, general presentation, which will be followed by Dr. Murali's presentation on the specific topic. Thank you all. And uh, let me start with my presentation now. Slide is uh, whether can I see the slide moving now? Yes, sir. Is it moving? Okay. Yes, it's moving. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next slide. So, as the uh, director has already told, uh, our institute was founded in 1957, and our institute has proven excellence in developing fishy crossing technologies and fish harvest technologies. And we have made commendable contributions in the field of harvesting, crossing, packaging, product development, quality assurance, byproducts, and fishery waste utilization. Next slide, please. And these are the arenas where which uh, in which CIT works. So we have developed the resilient fishing systems. We have uh, systems for utilization of harvested fishery resources using appropriate technology. And we have employed green technology and technologies in the fish harvest and post harvest sector. And also we are working on bioprospecting of aquatic and other resources. And also we have we are working on molecular diagnostics, developing molecular diagnostics tools for foodborne and uh, culture species pathogens. And uh, we have established effective mechanisms for technology management and commercialization, human resource development and training at different levels. And we have developed the appropriate biosecurity measures to tackle the issues of animal health. And uh, importantly, we have developed quality systems using conventional and frontier technologies to ensure fish products processing and consumption. So these are the technology arenas in which the ICR CFT works. And uh, besides that, we are the National Referral Laboratory and the National Reference Laboratory for Fish and Fishery Products. And we are an ISO certified organization. And we are a center of excellence for international training in the harvest and post-harvest technology of fish. Besides which, we have a well-established business incubation and agribusiness incubation center in this institute for the entrepreneurs and startups. Next slide, please. And these are the research divisions of CFT. Just to give a in general introduction about CFT, I'm talking this one. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a fishing technology division wherein we work on standardization of fishing gears and accessories, low cost and fuel efficient fishing crafts, bycatch reduction technologies, adversaries for gear based policy interventions. And we have a fish processing division in which we work on development of nutraceuticals and byproducts from fish and fish based thermal and non thermal processed food products from fish, development of value added products from fish, and innovative packaging techniques. Next slide, please. Then we have biochemistry and nutrition division, wherein we mainly work on the extraction and characterization of uh, biomolecules, nutritional profiling of fishes, contaminant profiling, and developing nutraceutical and functional foods. We have an engineering division, which is our presently who is organizing this seminar, wherein we work on design and development of fish processing and equipment machineries, energy efficient, eco friendly solar dryers, indigenous electronic instruments for uh, application in harvest and post harvest areas energy and water optimization techniques for fish processing industry. These aspects will be covered in the next speaker, Dr. Murli's presentation. Next slide, please. Uh, then we have a quality assurance and management division wherein we work on methods for evaluating microbial and uh, chemical organic quality techniques for ensuring the food safety, waste minimization technologies, and also developing a package of practices for different types of food industries. We have microbiology fermentation and biotechnology division for the development of nucleic acid-based methods for bacterial identification, toxin detection, and taxonomy, data mining on microbial changes during fish handling and processing, monitoring of microbial pollution aquaculture systems. These are the areas which is covered by microbiology and biotechnology and fermentation division. And we have an extension information and statistics division for the dissemination of technology to act as a liaison between fishery industry and the institute by the dissemination of the research results of the institute to the 
actual end users and carry out research on extension status and economics and computer applications training and field level extension activities next slide please and uh, coming to the fish consumption pattern because our theme is fish for health wealth and prosperity as everybody knows at least the learned audience may know that uh, fish is a healthy food and fish is a source of so many uh, rich protein and nutrients so coming to the consumption pattern of india generally uh, we know that uh, indians uh, doesn't prefer that much fish a majority of the indians and if you see the consumption pattern you can see the mostly the consumption pattern is limited to the that uh, most uh, fish is being consumed most in the coastal states and also the areas adjacent to the co coastal states and uh, of course we are uh, as of, uh, in kerala lakshadweep andaman nicobar island west bengal these are the areas where people consume um, uh, fish mostly and nearly 60% of the indian population consume fish but uh, contrary to the popular perception that fish is not being consumed widely fish is being consumed widely and 60% of the indian population consume fish but the consumption varies with the region okay definitely because uh, uh, as you can see from the map of india that uh, where it is consumed most and uh, where it is consumed least and if you see the top fish producers gujarat tops the chart and followed by kerala andhra pradesh and west bengal and top fish consumers definitely lakshadweep lakshadweep as you know uh, lakshadweep their staple diet is fish only because it is an island surrounded by the seas and the staple diet is fish and of course kerala we have a very rich coastline and we get lot of variety of fishes and also goa west bengal so these are the most fish consuming states in india next slide please and uh, if you think the world fish production uh, aquatic animal not only fish if you take uh, Uh, the world fish production the whole entire aquatic animal production is 178 million tons and which is uh, um, out of which 157.4 million tons is used for the human consumption and uh, per capita apparent consumption is 20 kg and this is a highly disputed figure because this 20 kg per capita consumption is uh, limited to a few regions in the world if you take the case of india also some regions in india may have even more per capita per capita consumption than this average consumption but in the majority of the cases it is less than 10 kg per uh, average next slide please and uh, uh, there is a saying that uh, we are what we eat there is a saying so now everybody has uh, emphasized on the role of diet in our life because if you want to maintain a healthy um healthy lifestyle you have to have a healthy food and uh, definitely people know uh, we can if we compare the diets with the fast food and healthy food see uh, fast food is the uh, in thing people always prefer fast food convenience food but uh, there should be an emphasis on the healthy food and uh, which will contribute to the healthy body and healthy mind and definitely that will lead to a complete human being and fish definitely constitute one of the healthy food that is very essential for the human being next slide please and uh, these are the recommendatory dietary allowances for indians what are the what is the role of micronutrients and minerals and also the vitamins so you can see most of this uh, uh, that uh, micronutrients minerals or vitamins are present in fish and uh, i will come to that later these are the recommendatory dietary allowances by the icmr and that is required for how much it is required for a healthy human being for man woman different categories infants all these are being categorized there are data and there are statistics regarding how much a person should require all these micronutrients and vitamins as well as the minerals for the human being and uh, uh, as we come later we will know that fish is one of the richest source of all the essential micronutrients minerals and vitamins that is required for the human diet next slide please why we should eat fish because uh, first of all uh, it provides food security to almost 1.39 billion which is expected to reach 1.64 billion by the year 2050 so we have to provide sec uh, food security to this much people in the in the country and by 2050 we have to provide food security to almost 1.64 billion and that is a challenging risk task for us 
but uh, we are rich with the resource that is as a resource we have we are rich in fishery resources both from the marine as well as the inland and aquatic resources so it is our role uh, it is our duty to ensure that these resources are properly properly utilized to ensure food security for our population next slide please so <clears throat> regarding fish nutrition what is uh, uh, how much what uh, the fish contains next slide please mm -hmm. next slide so this is in a nutshell what the fish contains you can see fish is a very rich source of omega-3 fatty acids it's a source of vitamin a it's a source of uh, nutrients minerals like zinc calcium iron and it's a very rich source of protein because fish protein, when we compare with the animal protein, definitely it is a healthier and a more complete protein when we compare the fish protein with the animal protein. And uh, fatty acid also, as everybody knows, it's a layman's knowledge that uh, fish, uh, fish fat is a healthy fat and it contains omega-3 fatty acids. Like we have, a, we have this is a rich source of PUFA, like uh, DHA and EPA, this, all this uh, PUFA, essential omega-3 fatty acids are present in fish. So, as you can see, it's a complete storehouse of nutrients, proteins, and minerals as fish. Next slide, please. And uh, if you take the BRICS case, BRICS, as you know, the country list, like which comprises of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. There's a BRICS nation. There's an organization called the BRICS. Actually, it, uh, it is more the, the, five, the six countries that belong here, five countries. If you see the malnutrition level, among which these BRICS countries, India tops in malnutrition here. And uh, more than 200 million Indians are nutritionally insecure with 46% children being undernourished. And uh, nutrient deficient diets are a fact of everyday life of millions. And uh, in children also, there's a problem of malnutrition, there's a problem of underweight, and they are, they are suffering from multi micronutrient deficiencies and uh, we need to have effective interven interventions for this slide, please. Next slide. We need to have effective interventions in this sector, especially for the children, for the vulnerable sectors of our society, uh, to address this problem of malnutrition. Therein, the importance of fish comes. And interestingly, fish is probably the most affordable source for million people also. Still in India, in many parts of the country, Fish is a cheap source of protein. Uh, living alone Kerala or our uh, particular uh, Kerala region, where now fish is very costly proposition when we compare to other source of protein. But in many parts of the country, especially the inland states and other parts, fish is a very costly and uh, fish is a very affordable source of protein, and it can provide almost forty essential nutrients. So therein comes the importance of fish and fish products as an intervention to elevate this multi-micronutrient deficiency in the other kinds of malnutrition problem among the among our population. Next slide, please. And the nutritional, if you see the nutritional composition of fish, I already mentioned a few. Fish is a rich source of all fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. It contains moisture, it's a, it contains moisture to the level of uh, around 80% moisture is there. And it contains protein also when compared to 60 to 80 percent is the moisture. And crude protein level is 20 percent, and fat level is around 5 to 19 percent. That is highly variable that depending on the species. But protein level, if you can see, when you compare to the other forms of animal protein like beef or poultry, it is having a higher source of protein and it is a better source of protein also. And it contains a lot of minerals also, which is higher than any animal source of protein. Next slide, please. Then carbohydrate, of course, fish is not generally considered a source of carbohydrate because carbohydrate, of course, people can get from the other sources. But uh, carbohydrate is a source of energy. It is required in our diet and it is a store form of, it's, it's stored in the form of gly glycogen and provides a short term of energy reserve. Of course, carbohydrate is required in our diet, but fish is not a source of carbohydrate. It, it is a source of other nutrients. Next slide, please. So protein, why we require protein this is a general slide regarding what is the requirement is a major source of energy. It helps to control body functions. And it is also vital in maintaining body tissue, including development and repair. And why we need fat provides, definitely provides energy. It acts as a, a cushion to the internal organs. 
it carries the vitamins it acts as an insulator and it provides taste for all these aspects we require all these major components in our diet next next slide please so if when again we come to the fish protein i told you it is a better protein than the animal protein fish protein is an excellent source of high value proteins containing all essential amino acids and a good alternative to red meat which you already mentioned the red meat like beef and other things so it's a better protein because it is a source of high value protein and highly digestible protein it can be safely taken by even uh, the children and other uh, uh, sections so it's a highly digestible due to its structure of cord muscle fibers and low connective tissue and fish powder a protein rich product with a low glycemic index has been found to process health effects like managing obesity hypertension cardiovascular disease and malnutrition i would like to say that uh, we have done a small intervention in this aspect because now this fish powder is going to be introduced as a in the midday meal program of odisha state government through our intervention with the with the support of world fish organization so we have done a small work on that thing and now it has been accepted as an effective source of protein and this is going to be introduced in the midday meal scheme of the odisha state so there is a slight intervention from our part i am happy to tell and uh, it's a source of taurine which is an which pay, plays an important role in the stabilization of cell membrane prevention of cardiac arrhythmias regulation and platelet functions reduction of blood pressure and modulation of neuronal activity next slide and uh, fish fat definitely fish fat a large proportion of the fat is a polyunsaturated fat which includes omega 3 fatty acids which are highly recommended in a health protective diet so omega 3 our common fishes like mackerel salmon is of course it's not found in our indian coast but other two fishes like mackerel and sardine are common fishes they are a very rich source of omega 3 fatty acids fatty acids and the fish contains omega 6 fat, fatty acids again it has lot of functions anti inflammatory cardio protective effects visual and neuro development improving insulin sensitivity and we have a, a fish shark liver oil particularly the shark liver oil is a rich source of squalene which reduces the cardiovascular problems increases vascular addition of molecule one ex expression of oxidation platelet aggregation vas vasoconstriction and all these aspects have been covered in the uh, has been addressed by the squalene so you can see that fish fat contains a variety of components which are very essential for our uh, healthy state next slide please and why fish oil fish oil as fish oil as in general if you can tell it has a cardio protective effect is a proven also it's clinically proven also the fish oils cardio protective has been clinically proven it reduces the arthritis and the macular degeneration reduces high blood pressure reduces the risk of depression improves skin and hair health effectively treat osteoporosis protects against type 2 diabetes and controls cholesterol level so you can see how effective and how highly important this fish oil is so that is why we again stress on the consumption of fish next next slide please and vitamins you can see the it's a natural source of the below mentioned vitamins vitamin b vitamin a vitamin d vitamin a i need not have to elaborate on the importance of this vitamins but generally speaking it is all these vitamins are vital to our body functions and any any lack of any of these vitamins can lead to serious health problems so fish is a source of all these vitamins a rich source of and a natural source of all these vitamins next slide please and it's also a source of minerals again the most important minerals are magnesium phosphorus and iodine iron zinc all these minerals are very important and uh, the minerals in fish are highly bioavailable that is very important bioavailability of that minerals it doesn't mean that you have to consume a diet which is low in bioavailability availability and uh, even if you say that it is rich in minerals your body may not be able to synthesize the may be able may not be able to assimilate this thing but the fish whatever minerals that is consumed through the fish diet that is that are highly bioavailable and easily assimilated in our body and no need to explain about the importance of these minerals it requires for so many body functions and fish is again i underline that is a rich source of minerals next slide please and uh, this is a important functions of the minerals which we also mentioned and it is also be playing a major role in the development of the organism itself 
it is in the development of bone development, fry and fingerling, every, everywhere it requires a mineral. And of course, in the human diet, it plays a very important role. Next slide, please. And uh, another area is the nutraceutical from fish. Our earlier concept was fish only as a food only. It's a staple diet for the millions. But now the concept has been changed that fish can be a very rich source of nutraceuticals and health products from fish. So we are also working on that aspects and we have developed so many products which have nutraceutical values. Like you can see the fish lipids and the chitin and these derivatives, it is essentially prepared from the exoskeleton of uh, uh, the shrimp and other uh, aquatic species. So chitin, it is a biopolymer and its derivatives. Then protein hydrolysates, collagen, gelatin, collagen peptides, squalin, chondroitin, glucosamine and uh, hyaluronic acid, astaxanthin. These are all the uh, uh, derivatives which you can obtain from fish. And these are all uh, important from the health point of view because they can serve as a nutraceutical. Next slide, please. And also, now we have an ambitious program because our coastline is uh, rich in seaweeds. And if you take the case of uh, Southeast Asian nations like Japan, wherein you have a very high incidence of longevity, 40% of their diet comprises of seaweeds. That is a seaweed. And seaweed is a very healthy diet. And uh, the Honorable Prime Minister has a program for the utilization of the seaweed. CFT is a part of the, that program because our coast is rich in seaweed. Our seas contain a lot of different types of seaweeds. And uh, these are marine plants. And uh, these have different types of pigment. And depending on the pigment, they can be classified into red, green, and brown seaweed. And these are relatively unexplored in India, but they are the promising sources of novel health promoting biomolecules such as lipids, carotenoid, peptides, sulfated carbohydrates, dietary fibers, essential amino acids, vitamins, and trace minerals. And they contain unique bioactive hormones which have immense applications in the field of biomedical nutraceutical. And so when we talk about fish, definitely you have to consider the seaweed. And we have developed a lot of uh, seaweed-based products also. And we have developed uh, uh, seaweed-based edible products like seaweed nutrient drink and also other products, seaweed uh, incorporated cookies. And these are all supposed to be the health supplements and nutraceutical products. And uh, we have commercialized these technologies for the seaweed-based products also. Next slide, please. And these are some of the uh, common forms of fish products which are being exported from the country. You can see the fish steaks, fish fillets. Next slide, please. These are all ready to cook, ready to fry products from fish. So apart, these are the major forms in which we are utilizing the fish. And also we are exporting a lot of fish products. Uh, in India, among the agriculture commodities, fish is being exported most. And this year we have almost realized that uh, foreign exchange to the tone of 50,000 crores just by exporting fish and fish based products from India. Next slide, please. These are the frozen products from fish. Next slide. Battered and breaded products from fish, by basically with the fish means and prawn. Next slide, please. Specialty products. These are all for mainly for the export purposes that which is, we, 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 we prepare it from the shrimp and other shell fishes. Next slide, please. Specialty products. Breaded products, fish burgers, fish momos, fish wafers, and fish uh, soup preparations. These are all the specialty products. Fish sausages. Next slide, please. Surumi. Surumi, of course, in layman's term, it is a washed fish mince, which is a bland product. But you can make a lot of analog products from fish, uh, from surumi. Essentially, it is prepared from fish, and it's a high-value product. In India also, we have a uh, uh, lot of industries who are manufacturing this surumi. And surumi is being mainly consumed uh, in the foreign countries as well as in the Southeast Asian countries. We can prepare a lot of analog products and it is one of the most highly value added products from fish. Next slide, please. And these are the ready to eat fish products in cans, jerrys, pouches, all these things. These are all convenience products from fish. Next slide, please. Cured dry fish products, traditional products, but we have developed technologies to hygienically prepare and standardize the fish products. So these are all the fish items ready to, and another category ready to eat extruded products based on fish means. We have developed technologies for this also. Next slide, please. 
<coughs> then ethnic products, traditional fermented smog products. Smog products, one classic case is mass bean from Lakshadweep tuna, which is a tuna based product. Then our all our pickles. So this institute has developed standardized technologies for all these ethnic and traditional products also. Next slide, please. As you all know, uh, being a very healthy product, but fish is also tend to spoil very quickly. So you should ensure that fish is being handled very properly. And these are some of the good hygienic practices to handle the fish and prevent the spoilage. So whenever you handle the fish, you should be careful that your wash has to be uh, thoroughly washed. And you have to, uh, and also when you are preparing to handle raw fish also, you have to be hygienically very clean before handling the raw fish. And don't let raw fish or juices touch ready to eat food. You should, there should not be any cross contamination with the other fruit. The fish has to be handled separately. And also fresh fish should always be kept in chilled and frozen condition. That is very important because unless and until you keep it in the chilled or frozen condition, the fish will immediately go for spoiling. So these are some of the precautions you have to take while handling the product. So in conclusion, we can tell that fish is a very healthy product. Fish is uh, very good for your health. And also fish has a lot many options for value addition and also for uh, ensuring food security for our population by the year 2050. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, my, for your patient hearing. Uh, so this is the general pre uh, presentation regarding the theme. Now we will have the next presentation uh, by Dr. Murali on the specific theme, uh, specific topic. So thank you very much for uh, patiently hearing me. Once again, thank you all. Thank you, sir, for a great presentation and making us understand that fish has a major role in fighting hunger and malnutrition. So now we'll move on to the core, of, core part of this program. Here we have our esteemed speaker, Dr. Murali S., Scientist Engineering Division, to deliver at the talk on the subject, Engineering Interventions in post harvest Fishery Sector. I may introduce Dr. Murali S. to the uh, participants. So Dr. Murali is work, presently working as Scientist in Engineering Division, and he's working in the area of solar thermal energy conversion systems, design and development of fish processing equipment and machinery, non-destructive techniques for fish quality and freshness evaluation, and energy and water use optimization for the seafood industries. He has authored more than 20 research publications in peer-reviewed high-impact research journals. He has obtained three design registration for the equipment and machinery, one copyright for the mobile alert system for dryers, and filed two patent applications for solar hybrid dryer and live fish transport system. He has received Kerala State Energy Conservation and Commendation Certificate 2018, Kerala State Renewable Energy Award and Commendation Certificate 2018, Scotch Award and Scotch Evergreen Platinum Award 2018, Locos Technology Award for the research activities in the renew renewable energy field. At present, he is handling DST funded Young Scientist Project on multi purpose solar thermal energy conversion system with gasifier heat backup system. So now we'll have the presentation. Hope my presentation is visible. Uh, so good morning, one and all, uh, all the participants. So I am going to talk for another 30 to 40 minutes on the engineering interventions in post harvest fishery sector that I, uh, topic. So the engineering interventions in post harvest sector, if you take as such, it is a vast area. So I am going to cover only the areas where we are working at ICRC AFT. So to start with, uh, I will be giving the outline of the presentation. So the major areas of our uh, activities are, one is uh, the design and development of energy efficient, eco-friendly fish dryers. Secondly, the design and development of fish processing equipment and other machineries. Also, we are working on uh, development of uh, portable, non-destructive fish freshness and quality assessment sensors. We also work on energy and water use optimization techniques for the seafood industries. Then we also work on future refrigeration systems. And eventually, uh, how uh, the technologies are the areas where we work, how we have converted the technologies into the entrepreneurship development. So that will be at the end, I will be discussing. So this is the areas where we work and this forms the base for the uh, presentation outline. So 
the first the design and development of his, uh, fish um, dryers. So to start with, let me give you a brief introduction about the dry fish status in India. So approximately 17% of the total catch of the fish is dried, either for export or for the local uh, consumption. Also, if you see the global average it is 12%, that means uh, at least 5% of the total catch what we are getting that is going for drying compared to the global average. So basically the, the type of fishes uh, uh, the dried are the excess catch of fishes and the low value fishes are the fishes having higher perceptibility that are generally dried and it is going for the uh, drying process. So the dried fishes are not only consumed in the coastal regions, it is also going to the inland areas for domestic consumption. And you know, the Jagiro dry fish market in Assam is one of the famous and largest dry fish market in Asia. So the dry fish as a subsistent activity contributes approximately seven to eight percentage of the total fish export. So the major importing countries are Bangladesh, Hong Kong, Japan, Kuwait, Mauritius, Nepal, and Sri Lanka. But if you see, the dry fishes are not generally uh, properly packed and then sold in the market. So all of you must have seen this. You can see the pictures in the right side that the dry fishes are generally sold in the open conditions or in the gunny bags or some type of local packaging materials, which does not extend the shelf life. So if it is appropriately packed, that is the study by APDA in 2016 says, if the modified atmospheric packaging is introduced with the dry fish, then the dry fish export percentage from 8% to 25% it can be increased. This shows that the area where the dryers, uh, the type of packaging material we have to use, the type of uh, the coordination requires uh, starting from the cleaning of the fish, drying of fish, the quality aspects and packaging and marketing. So by this, what are the importance? So we are able to get the cheap source of nutrition as we have previously heard in the previous presentation also, it is a high source of protein. Then once we dried it, we can make sure that the dried fishes, uh, the fishes are available throughout the year. Also, as and when there is a perishability issue, some fishes are very um, perishable or the price which, uh, fluctuations in the market, these type of things can be overcome by drying the material and we can make sure that the dried material is available subsequently. So the, it also forms a source of rural livelihood and income generation for the fisher folks. And we can see that maximum the dry fish business people are doing the fisher folks, in, especially in the fisher, fisher folks, the fisher women is mostly doing the, uh, the drying process. So it will form as a source of rural livelihood and also income generation for those people. Also, once we dried it, we, uh, especially uh, during the uh, situations like pandemic and lockdown, this dried fish can act as a supplement or it re can replace the uh, requirement of the fish consumers. Also, the fishing ban period, trawling ban period also, it can be utilized as an uh, alternative for the uh, fish consumers. Next. So, uh, but we have to work on the drying aspects, but what is being done at present? This is a traditional method that is open sun drying method only followed in India. And what we do, we directly expose the commodity to solar radiation and the convective power of the natural wind. So what are the advantages? The energy is free, renewable and abundant, and the method is very cheap. However, the drawbacks are the product quality, inferior product quality, the attack of weather and other dust, insects and first infestation, microbial infestation. Also, the susceptibility of the drying process, the drying material to, uh, to the environmental conditions. A study says that approximately 30% to 40% of material that is kept for drying is lost during the open sun drying system. So, and also it is time consuming labor incentive. Some people have to go there, spread it. They may have to suffer it. So they have to again take it back, load it. So these are all the issues with the open sun drying, which is being followed by the professor folks in India. So it is uh, imperative that some type of setup has to be made which should have the balance between the technology one side and the cost on the other side because we are working for the for Fisher folks. So we have done some solar hybrid drying systems, which is one step ahead of the sun drying system. Uh, then we can also, it is affordable to the Fisher folks. Next. Then solar drying means what basically we do. We enhance the effect of solar radiation using the glasses. Thus, we are able to generate higher temperature. We can reduce the relative humidity. 
by doing that we can improve the drying rate we can also reduce the moisture content of the product and also the drying time required for the solar drying is less compared to the open sun drying also in terms of quality we can retain color taste nutritional value all those things and also this solar drying system is environmental friendly because we are using the renewable energy and also it is supportable to the users then what are the drawbacks when we say solar drying the drawbacks are we cannot ensure that the product um, the solar drying can be done during uh, cloudy days rainy days for that matter off sunshine hours maybe night time uh, this is a continuous rain there is no sunshine it cannot be done so at cft what we have done we have developed a solar dryer with some backup systems so that the drying process can be continuous so even during off sunshine hours or it is a night time or evening time there is no sunshine the drying system can work next so in the solar drying as i already told you we will be using a small structure of a very simple construction to enhance the effect of solar radiation also to ensure that the flow of the wind can be regulated based on our requirement by doing that as i already told you temperature can be increased relative humidity of the drying air can be reduced which empowers which ensures that the drying time can be reduced moisture also will be very less and also the important thing is that uniform drying also can be obtained next this solar dryers there are some essential parts one is the drying chamber another one is solar thermal collector and the air flow system for any solar drying system the three aspects are very important there should be a drying chamber in which the material will be kept there should be an air flow system even there is a very less temperature also if the air flow is there the fresh air is going inside and coming out it can remove some amount of moisture that's why in the open sun drying also we are able to remove it when we use the solar thermal collector the solar thermal collector is nothing but the glass cover on the top there is a space between the observer plate and the cover so that when the sunshine is there the incoming air will get heated up and the heated air will be going to the material where we place and the moisture will be removed so these essential parts the dryers are also classified in general on three ways one is direct method where you can see the top side uh, picture the direct sunshine is falling on the glass cover that is moving through the transparent glass cover and attacking the food material also so that is called direct method when we say indirect method you can see the bottom picture the right side the collector is separate where in which we are only collecting the heat air and the heated air will be thrown to the drying chamber that is called indirect when we say mixed dryer we will have the material on both the places one will be just below the glass cover another one will be in the chamber when we say hybrid we will bring in the backer systems say the uh, normal electrical heating elements or the biomass backup or the solar lpg backup will be bring in so that way it can be called hybrid dryer next then the solar dryers also can be classified in different ways so one such uh, report has been published we can see that solar dryers can be classified on basically on first two aspects one is whether it is a natural convection dryer or a forced convection dryer whether we are taking the help of the natural buoyancy force or we are using the fans and blowers to circulate the air then secondly what type of heat we are using whether it is a sensible heat or a latent heat sensible heat means we are trying to retain the heat of the material but we are not changing the phase whereas latent heat we will be changing the phase of the material in the subsequent slides i will tell you uh, exactly what is sensible heat and how it can be used for the drying system then it can also be as i already told you it can be direct indirect and then direct there is a cabin type of things there is a screen of type of things when we say cabin it usually be usually a puff panel uh, setup it should be a cabin and inside there will be ss trays in greenhouse means we will be either using the polythene sheet in a greenhouse uh, or we will be using the polycarbonate sheet again the type of flooring what we are doing in the greenhouse dryer whether it is we are doing the concrete or we are putting the tiles also what type of the glazing materials are used polythene polycarbonate polyglass fiberglass the type of structure whether it is a semi semicircular uh, parabolic or tunnel shape also the whether the north wall is insulated uh, that way also the greenhouse dryers can be classified in the indirect dryer also what type of collectors are used i was giving a reference to the solar air heating collectors whether it can be used to water heating system sensible heat storage material can be bring in inside also the type of concentrators we have what we use in the solar water heating collectors whether it is a flat plate evacuator tube or a compound parabolic collector also when we say mixed there will be a cabinet also there will be a solar collector there will be a greenhouse also there will be a solar collector also when we say hybrid there is a photovoltaic thermal assisted dryers where in which the energy requirement for the running the fans and blowers will be met from the pv panel 
the amount of heat energy required for the increasing the temperature of the drying air will be taken through the solar aerating collectors either it can be aerating or waterating systems then thermal storage assisted whether we are using any water storage one such example is called the water water storage so the water will get heated during the daytime then it can supplement the stored heat during the off sunshine hours or we are using the lpg or we are using the biomass also the electrical aerating systems we are using so these these are all the ways the solar dryers can be classified next so what is the market potential for the dryers it, is, it it can be used for basically the dryers are multi purpose not only for fish and fishery products it can be used for fruits vegetables spices and other agro products our target group dryer starts from the fresher folks to the processing industries next so we have a siftec sip dry uh, uh, dryers so next one such dryer is called a solar dryer with electrical backup 20 kg basically you can see the right side um, picture there is a solar aerating collector on the top as a roof just below that we have kept the uh, drying chamber so whatever the fresh air is going inside the solar aerating collectors will be getting heated up the heated air will come to the drying chamber by using a blower so we will have a thermostat inside so that the incoming temperature of the drying uh, heat uh, the collector air will be checked say for a fish drying we are keeping 55 to 60 degrees celsius if that particular temperature is there directly the air will be blown inside and the wire in which we have kept the uh, material in the ss trays if not we have placed the heating coil in the dryer so this heating coil will try to increase to the required temperature say the incoming air is only 45 degrees celsius the heating coil will increase to next to 50, 10 or 15 degrees celsius it will use and make sure that the drying temperature is obtained then only the drying air will go inside the dryer and then drying will be completed so one such dryer is 20 kg solar electrical hybrid dryer here we have used flat flex solar aerating collectors here there will be aluminum sheet on the bottom then above that there is a aluminum observer sheet then there is a gap between the glass cover and the aluminum observer sheet then all the sides are closed with insulation material there will be fresh air move from one side upon moving inside it gets heated up so the total heat absorbing area of the collector is 8 meter square the total tray area is 5.4 meter square here heat backup we have given approximately 1.5 kilowatt and the drying time here is about 6 to 8 hours similarly we have another one dryer it is 40 kg capacity so here we have used solar heat absorbing area of about 10 meter square tray area of 20 meter square and heat backup of 3 kilowatt and the drying can be done from uh, can be done within 6 to 8 hours next so we have one another important dryer that is solar lpg hybrid dryer 60 kg capacity here we are not using the air heating collectors instead we are using the water heating collectors flat plate water heating collectors and then here we are using the sensible heat storage material that is water the sensible heat storage materials are such materials which can get heated up during the sunshine hours but without changing the phase for example water at present it is 25 degrees celsius when the peak sunshine hours are there it can store maximum heat inside so the 25 may go to 60 70 80 or 90 degrees celsius then when there is no sunshine the stored heat can be utilized so that is why one may ask why to use aerating collectors why you are using water heating collectors that is the reason so here aerating collectors are there as and when there, there is no sunshine immediately the temperature of the air coming to the dryer will be very less if it is water heating system we can ensure that the stored heat can be brought it in the especially when evening time we are doing it from morning to evening the drying has to continue for one or two hours so during that time this system can work here we have provided with lpg backup systems so you can see the right side schematic diagram basically there is a tank which is filled with the cold water as and when there is a sunshine starts from the morning there we have control we have the different controllers with uh, different pumps are placed so when the when we start the drying in the morning time when sunshine is there the water from the tank will be circulated to the drying uh, collector to the top so when this water is moving to the collector it is getting heated up during its movement so when it comes out the temperature is raised say we are using 25 degrees celsius it is going inside it will come out as a 45 50 based on the sunshine availability that heated water will come and stay in the same tank so you can see after some time the cold water will be in the bottom whatever water has gone to the collector and come to the top will be hot so this is like due to density difference the cold water will stay in the bottom and hot water will be always in the top it is a thermocline storage system 
from here what we will do from the top we will take water and we will circulate to the radiator which is placed inside the drying chamber you can see it there then we have a fan opposite to it when the fan is blowing the hot air will go across the heat exchanger um, uh, cross flow heat ex exchange will happen so the drying air will get the heat from the water and the temperature of the drying air will be retained means uh, attained so say 60 degrees celsius you can able to attain it then the water moving to the radiators will come back and store in the same tank at the bottom because when the hot water gone inside the dryer it has given up the heat to the drying air then the uh, the temperature of the water comes down again 25 gone it came as 60 or 70 the 70 has been sent inside we got the 60 degree celsius for the drying chamber then it come to 30 degree celsius or 35 then the that water is taken and stored in the bottom of the color tank because there only the cold water is staying so like that the circle will continue as and when there is no sunshine or it is a half sunshine hours night we are doing, doing the drying process then our lpg backup system will automatically uh, on and then it will do the process so we have a temperature sensor fixed on the top of the tank so it will say that whether the required temperature is attained in the tank top if not obtained this uh, lpg system will automatically ignite you can see that there is a gas geyser also placed 15 liters gas geyser the normal gas cylinder also placed you can also see there is a tank inside so this system also will continue so the entire system we have um, uh, automated so that all the places we have placed this um, uh, temperature sensors also one will have a uh, doubt on when that um, water is going to the collector if it is continuously going and coming this water from the tank will get mixed up when the water is continuously going to the collector and coming so what we have done we have used a differential temp uh, temperature controller that means we can set a temperature difference between the cold and the collector top say we have fixed it at least 10 degree celsius that means as and when there is a 10 degree difference at least 10 degree difference from the cold water and the top of the collector then only the cold water will go up and then hot water will come otherwise if continuously going to the top there won't be any heating occurs also uh, the tank will get mixed up so we may not be able to send the hot water to the drain chamber so we have included uh, a differential temperature controller also different temperature sensors to control the pump which is circulating the water so this system uh, we have already filed a patent uh, and we have published also this work in uh, uh, i impact journals uh, so this system also we have uh, commercialized in different parts of the country this i will be showing on the end of the slides next then we also developed on solar tunnel dryer this dryer capacity is about 50 kg having a floor area of 12 meters square we have used here uv stabilized transparent polythene sheet for roof also black observer sheet for flooring uh, we have used here only cpvc pipes for making these structures because it is a low cost dryer and people especially the fisher folks we are working they come with low investment they cannot invest in the cabinet type of dryers for them we suggest this this is costing only 70000 rupees and we can dry about 70 kg of 50 kg of material so here also we have the wooden frames with the ss trays are there inside the material can be spread on it then we have the uh, uh, pv panels to supply the uh, power for running the fans inside the only drawback of this system is that we have not provided with any backup systems so as and when there is no sunshine we cannot do the drying process next then some people also come up with uh, some more investment they have but they cannot uh, go for the cabinet type of dryers we have done somewhat a semi permanent we can say a permanent structure wherein which we have used the poly polycarbonate sheet so the uh, the self life of the polythene sheet is very less compared to polycarbonate sheet here we also used the kadapa tiles for the flooring also we have used aluminum extrusions for the structure so this system is costing approximately 150000 so this is also affordable it can be used for uh, all agricultural commodities in addition to piston fishery products next then other than the solar dryers we also developed biomass dryer so the uh, the participants the researchers the students uh, faculties working on biomass dryer will know that there is one major drawback with the uh, biomass dryer that is one man manpower should be there to load the material secondly there is no control to regulate the temperature in the drying chamber so our all our dryers are automated and we are maintaining the temperature from start of the drying to end of the drying then only we can ensure that the uniformity of dried product also we can ensure the uh, moisture remnant and all those things here the biomass dryer one drawback is that temperature cannot be maintained so we have done a one small innovation 
what you are seeing from here the uh, left side top is the drying chamber the other one is the biomass furnace in which the material will be fed say it's a coconut shell or wood or briquettes will be fed then we will be firing it then we have put up a small blower nearby so we have placed a sensor in the drying chamber as and when there is a temperature requirement is not attained the blower will be running when the temperature is attained the blower will not on the blower means the drying will continue there is a separate blower for the drying chamber i am talking about the small blower placed under the combustion chamber so with that we are able to maintain the drying temperature in the biomass dryer also so this is costing approximately 1 lakh 30 thousand here we can keep about 30 to 40 kg of materials and we have got uh, 10 ss trays inside next so we also developed one small household electrical dryer next then other than the solar hybrid drying systems uh, the biomass dryer we also work on the advanced drying technologies one such technology is called uh, infrared fish drying system here we are trying to utilize the infrared rays for drying purpose uh, here the material will be placed just below the infrared bulbs or the ceramic heaters here when we uh, do this IR drying system, we can able to reduce the drying time. We can also retain maximum uh, color, texture, and uniformity. Here, these infrared, when the particular infrared radiation we are getting the, uh, the from the bulb, we are getting the electromagnetic spectrum under the IR range. When that range is there, the photons, when it is coming from that, it attacking the product surface. And also, it penetrates to approximately one centimeter. When it is penetrating inside, the molecules, food molecules are getting heated up. When it is getting heated up, it makes uh, the molecules are getting vibrated. Then because of the vibration friction, there is a heat development. Because of the heat development, whatever moisture is available, getting vaporized, that vapor is coming to the surface. Also to throw the surface moisture, we have given with water assistance here. You can see the batch type infrared fish dryer placed here. So here, uh, we have done on a, um, um, a prototype mode here, approximately uh, 2 to 3 kg of uh, uh, fish can be kept here. Then we are also working on a continuous system. Here the only drawback with the IR system is that the exposure. All the material has to get exposed to the IR waves. So what we have done, we have developed a continuous system. Next. Uh, here, this is a continuous system. We got the two conveyor uh, uh, trays are there. The top layer, we will be loading from one side, then it will move once uh, one, uh, one end, then it will come back to the uh, second layer so that it can be continuously exposed where there is no overexposure. So there, there is no case hardening or the brown color development. Here, uh, this dryer can dry approximately 20 kg of fish per day. Here, the drying time is only two and up to three hours. As I already told you, when we talk about the conventional dryers, it can be a solar dryer or biomass dryer or any mechanical dryer, electrical dryers. Here, the advantage is that the drying time is less only because the heat penetrates from uh, surface to inside and uh, immediately the molecules get heated up. Then the moisture comes out, we are throwing out the moisture. Whereas in the surface drying, what we are talking about solar dryers and other dryers, the heat has to move from outer surface to inner region. So it will slowly move. Um, so that takes longer uh, time. That means longer exposure, even for six hours or 10 hours, when we long time exposure, prolonged exposure creates a uh, color difference. Also it disturbs the structure and the texture of the product. Next. Then you can see the advantages of the IR dryer as I already explained to you. When we do the convective drying, you see the temperature difference. The surface will be more Then inside it has to slowly reach. Whereas infrared heating, you can see the uniform heating. 22 degrees Celsius from surface to inside. So that is how we can get the improved energy efficiency, uniformity in the dried product. Uh, the process controls, we can appropriately control the drying temperature and other things. Uh, and also it is eco-friendly and the uniform temperature distribution, we can attain it. Also, it can be combined with any other drying technologies. Next. In addition to the IR dryer, we also developed water assisted micro drying system. The uh, principle of here micro drying is the same micro heating due to the ionic uh, conduction and the dipole rotation, the water molecules are getting heated up. There in the IR dryer, we are trying to, the, when the rays are penetrating the food material, the food molecules get heated up. Here, only the electrical field is important. So the water molecules, uh, due to the dipole rotation, the water molecules getting uh, vibrated. Due to the vibration, there is a friction. Friction due to friction, there is a heat development. 
then that also due to vapor pressure difference the ambient temperature and the vapor pressure difference and the internal vapor pressure difference there is a uh, gradient will be there so due to that automatically the moisture will come to the surface to throw the moisture we have used the water resistance here next then for uh, saved dryers especially the solar dryers we have done some energy analysis and we understood that when we do only the electrical drying or we will go with solar electrical dryer how much energy can be saved and we understood that for all our dryers at least uh, two to three times extra energy is consumed when we go with only electrical or only lpg or we are only going with the uh, biomass system next then uh, the researchers uh, the students who are working on dryer will actually understand the difficulty with uh, conducting experiments in the dryer so for that we have developed one system called automatic remote data acquisition and alert system for the dryer users basically it is a mobile alert system so when we keep the material for drying we will be getting the sms to the user that has to be fed into the system so the user will be getting the um, sms is on a set interval which can be sent so what we have done here is that we have used a temperature sensor relative humidity sensor load sensor and then we also integrated that with the arduino board so this we also coded it so as and when there is a uh, drying happening so if you will get a message that the drying process has started then at the frequent interval how much is the moisture content how much drying has been over it can come also the advantage of the system is that not only getting the remote information it can also control the drying process say for example when we are doing the drying initially for a couple of hours two to three hours or four hours there will be maximum moisture removal with respect to that we can run the blower or the heating coil whereas when it the drying goes to the falling rate drying period you will not get the uh, saturated drying so that time the effect of this uh, temperature and uh, this uh, relative humidity is very less so during that time if you are unnecessarily uh, running the fan or the heating coil that has very little effect so during that time this temperature the fan can be controlled with the help of moisture and of the product also at the set temperature and the relative humidity for example the system dryer can be set for if it is more than 60 degree per 60 percent rh the fan has to run so that the mites air can be thrown out or if the temperature of 60 is not obtained if it is more than 60 degrees for example solar tunnel dryer you have no control over the temperature development but you don't want more than 60 degrees celsius during that time only the fan can run so it can be also programmed so accordingly at the uh, uh, set temperature and the relative humidity the fan can run and off also heating coil may run and off so that the energy can be saved this system also can send us the sms that when the drying is over the material is fully dried you can take the material like that so this system we have already got the corporate from our uh, corporate office next then on uh, overall the advantages of our dryers are that the efficiency of the dryer is very high it is supportable to the fresher folks and the uh, industries are the young budding entrepreneurs the operational cost of the dryers is coming only two to four per kg also uh, the cost of construction also less the drying time is substantially reduced labor requirement for um, the for spreading sifting all those things sorting can be eliminated self life can be extended at least six months to nine months self life can be ensured if the material is appropriately dried in our machine also appropriate um, handling practices is followed also this type of dryer can be very useful for the you know, fresher folks the entrepreneurs the small scale industries for that matter to the seafood industries next so other than the drying area we also work on small equipment development one such equipment is called uh, descaling machine so this is basically a hand operated descaling machine for removing the scales of the fishes so here uh, this is about 5 kg volume so we can use approximately 2 to 3 kg of fish can be loaded inside and the, uh, the handle one has to slowly rotate when they rotate it the fish will move with the uh, drum so inside we have made the uh, perforations in the drum with the serrations so due to the friction between the uh, the ss uh, perforated drum on the fish the scales are getting removed so when we rotate it the fish goes with the uh, cylinder after some extent when it goes up due to gravity it comes back so that way it is getting um, uh, uh, there is a friction between the drum and the fish so because of that the scales are removed but here one uh, caution is that if it is 
rotated very fastly, there won't be any descaling. This is because the centrifugation will occur. That means the product, the fish also will co-rotate with the drum. So we have to ensure that this is operated at the slow speed. We recommend approximately 20 to 30 revolutions per minute. So here, the, it is meant basically for the small type of fishes. We are not advising for the 1 kg, 2 kg fishes. It is meant only for the fishes having less than 250 grams. Why? Because we would like to reduce the drudgery involved in descaling for the small fishes only. Because say we have 2 kg, 3 kg of fish and we have taken and doing the descaling. It contains approximately 50, 60 fishes. So each one has to be taken and it has to be descaled. So it is a drudgery. When it is 1 kg, 2 kg, the scales are very big. It can be done very easily. So this is meant, uh, meant only particularly for the small size of fishes and especially for the fresher folks who are operating in the uh, fish markets and other places. It will be very helpful to them. And it is costing our approximately 4,500 rupees. Uh, next. Then we also have a, another version of the same uh, descaling machine. That is a motorized descaling machine. Here we can use the total capacity is 10 kg. Approximately, we can load it 5 kg to 7 kg of fishes. The same rules applicable here, only it meant for small size of fishes. And the cost of the motorized rescaling machine is uh, 12,500 rupees. Next. Then we also have a variable speed drum, similar principle. Here we can use 10 kg of fish. Next. Then we are also working on some commercial model of mini fish rescaling machine. The only drawback with the other rescaling machines are that uh, it cannot be completely removed and then. Uh, it has to be cleaned. There is a small issue with the cleaning things. So here we are working on a completely removable system. So uh, this system uh, it can be easily cleaned and the scaling efficiency also very high. Next. Uh, then for, we have also developed one refrigerated mobile fish vending kiosk. This is basically meant for uh, the fresher folks who are selling the fish on the roadsides. We can see that all the coastal areas, in fact, the inland areas, wherever the fishes are sold, the sellers are selling in the open condition. Hardly they use ice. Also, a lot of flies, smell, dust, everything. It is on the roadside. So we thought of developing a system in which the material can be hygienically stored and sold to the consumers. So such system is called the refrigerated mobile vending system. Here, we are using the normal vapor compression refrigeration system at the bottom. Then we have got the chilled storage. There are three chambers in which the material can be placed. Next. Here, uh, approximately 30 kg of fish can be loaded in the top of the uh, kiosk. You can see there are three chilled chambers. Then we also, the system also comes with the uh, cutting table and the descaling machine. So we intend to have a complete package. And also in the same kiosk, we can have a signboard in the front so that the type of fishes, what we are selling, what is its rate, one can come to know. Also, they can select if required to be descaled, the seller will descale there. Also, there is a cutting board and a cleaning system there itself. So it can be pakka cleaned and then given to the consumer. So we intend to have a hygienic um, marketing system. So this system we have already um, connected with different states across the country. We are uh, commercializing this uh, particular unit and it is costing approximately 65,000. Uh, so here we have already obtained a design registration for the kiosk. Next. Then we also, uh, some of the feedbacks from the uh, users, we got it that the energy usage. Uh, 200 watts energy supply should be there for the other system. So now we are working on solar powered refrigerated for mobile fish vending kiosk. You can already see it. We have got two different variants uh, from the solar powered system. Uh, so here we use approximately 390 watts panel, two numbers. Uh, then here the refrigeration capacity is 100 liters. So this we are uh, yet to commercialize. Next. Then we also developed a fish meat bone separator, mini fish meal plant. Uh, next, then there are a couple of electronic equipments, instruments uh, developed at the engineering division of ICR CAFT. Uh, this is, in fact, a couple of decades back, the, our senior scientists have developed these systems uh, for the, uh, understanding the, the RH, palladium, the temperature of the ambient condition, also the temperature uh, salinity or DO, all those things in the sea when they are going for fishing, navigation light control system, uh, Rio meter, uh, such things has been developed. Next. Then we also developed on Peltier cooler device. Here uh, we have used the Peltier module, the, uh, the 12 volt 15 amps Peltier model we have used. And uh, this Peltier cooler device uh, volume is approximately 5 liters. We have provided with battery backup. So this system can be used for transporting the materials 
whatever may be at 2 to 3 degrees Celsius. Uh, here we have used all the low cost materials, thermocol, cardboard box, plywood. Uh, so here basically when the Peltier module is there, when the DC current is supplied, one side of the module will generate heat, another side will get cold. So as much as heat is taken out, the other side will be getting cold to maximum. So the Peltier model is a small system in which we are putting a heat sink on the one side so that heat will be taken out. Heat sink is nothing but a fin and then fan will be there. So heat will be taken out from one side because of that the other side will be getting cold. The cooled area will be exposed to the chamber where in which we are placing the material. And also we can put the temperature sensor as and when the set temperature is come, this can control the uh, heat sink uh, fan and other things. Next. Then we also work on life transportation container, uh, similar to the Peltier module. In fact, we have initially tried with uh, uh, the same 12 volt Peltier, um, uh, six amps uh, system. Then uh, we have done some couple of experiments. We understood that the efficiency of the Peltier model is very less. And uh, the one advantage of the Peltier system is that it is called solid state refrigeration system. That means there is no moving parts, just like our normal refrigeration, vapor compression refrigeration system. There are different parts. There is a refrigerant moving from one place to one section to other section. But in the Peltier module, there is no such system. It is called a solid state refrigerator. But the drawback is that the COP, if you look at with the conventional system, here it is one by fifth only, or the efficiency is less than 10%. So because of that, it cannot be used. Then uh, we have had some industry collaboration uh, that we have developed a system for uh, life is transport. Here the uh, parameters to be taken are the oxygen, uh, that is the aeration system, also uh, the filtration system and the cooling. So we have developed a system with the industry partner. So we have used here double jacketed cooling system. That means there is a two boxes will be there. The internal and outer box, there is a gap in that the uh, ice slurry will be filled. So because of that ice slurry, the water temperature will come down. So when the temperature of the water is very less, the trust level of the fish can be controlled. The metabolic rate will be very less. So the trust will be less, the mortality rate upon transportation can be reduced. That was the idea. So we have used the slurry system, double jacketed uh, cooling system, so that the temperature of the water can be brought it down less than 20 degrees Celsius. Also, we have done a couple of experiments using different stock density, mortality rate, uh, different ratios of uh, slurry. Uh, then uh, we understood that uh, for uh, approximately 70% survival was there upon 24 hours transportation in a simulated condition, we have understood. Then now this actually this uh, particular uh, uh, technology is um, uh, taken up by our fish processing division. So they are have got now funding from external agency. Now they are working on a uh, foldable system. So that we have already filed the patent. For this system, we have already uh, applied for the design registration. Next. Then we are also working on solar powered feed dispenser come aerator. Here, uh, the aquifer dispensing system we, we have developed in which we have used solar PV panel. You can see that the motor what we placed can have capable of uh, having the RPM of 3000. Then this uh, we have provided with 7 AH battery and uh, it is operating at 12 volt. Then lead acid battery, so it is very small. We have placed HDFE surface float mechanism and we have conducted a couple of uh, uh, experiments uh, in uh, at, uh, the uh, KVK here. Uh, then we understood that uh, the feed size of 3 mm and 6 mm can be uh, used at 1200 RPM. We observed that this dispenses to a distance of approximately 6 meter in 1 minute. Also now we are working on not only dispensing system, we are also integrating the aeration with paddle wheel. So And also the drawback with the existing system is that one has to move it manually inside the water in the farm. Uh, pond. We are trying to do now with the uh, like a joystick based system, you are sitting in the outside the pond, we can able to uh, send the uh, feeder, uh, means feed dispenser inside and it can go and then feed it. Also, it can do the aeration and come back. Also, we are planning to work on uh, a couple of sensors to assess what is the present condition, the ponds, what is the salinity, how much is the DO, uh, when it has to, aerator has to be run, when the feeding, uh, feed, the feeder has to go inside. So such sensors and the integration with this particular unit also, we are going to work. Next. Then the other aspect is the development of non-destructive uh, analysis means technologies. One such thing is that fish freshness sensor. So it should be a portable device uh, and it should be an instrumented device because the when we go for purchasing fish, it is a subjective system. So each and everybody cannot purchase the fish 
uh, that only the fresh are extremely fresh fishes, it cannot be able to bring out, it varies with the person. So we thought of developing an instrumental system. Here we have used a um, uh, Raspberry Pi, we have used a camera, then we have coded it. Here what we have took, people are doing a lot of adulteration. What we thought is that the eye region cannot be done for any adulteration. No adulteration is possible in the eye region. And also we understood that the eye color changes with respect to the storage days. When it is very fresh, it is very translucent. Then it changes after some time the opaqueness develops. Also the color changes, yellowish blue color development is there when it is appropriately iced. I am talking about only the iced storage of fish. Then we understood how it can be taken one of the parameter. Also, this eye can be uh, uh, programmed. We can do the image processing so that we can come to know there is a slight variation in the eye color also. Then the same will be cross validated with the lab results. So we have taken the quality indicating parameters such as K value and cyclopoly count, uh, the TPC. Then we have correlated with our image processing results with the lab analysis. Then when we do the regression analysis, we understood that the particular fish, what I am talking about is the mackerel fish. For mackerel fish from this day to this day, it will be extremely fresh. After that, it is fresh and then spoiled. Next. You can see the mackerel uh, upon storage in the ice. Uh, wow, the color change is there. From day one to day five, you can see it. Next. Then we have done the image processing. We have tried to understand. We have converted the original image to RGB images. Then from there, we have taken the pixel count. Then based on the pixel count, we understood that the day, particular day we know, the day fixed with the pixel count, also with the quality analysis, we correlated. Next. Then you can see this device. Initially, we have, there is a camera region where in which we have to put the uh, fish. Then the image of the fish eye will be captured. Then it will be processed in our system. Then it can show the results. Next. Then we also done the 3D printing of the fish freshness sensor. So what the other one is a prototype, a crude one. So we thought of developing uh, somewhat a decent system, the mono unit, here in which we have used a fusion 3D printer with the polyamide material. So here you can see the processor board inside, LCD display, the functionality switches. In fact, now we have got a funding from the external agency. In fact, the personal sensor has been already got design registration. We are now working on the development of a small unit, a handle device. Also, we are working on the mobile application. Also, in future, we would like to work on the pieces identification as well as quality and the uh, freshness of the fish. Next. In addition to this, we also work on energy and water use optimization studies in the seafood industries. You see that there is a huge demand for energy in the seafood industries. Um, so when we done the a couple of industries in the Kochi cluster, we have taken and we understood that uh, the energy requirement approximately 80 to 90 percentage of energy requirement is going for air conditioning and refrigeration. So this is the real reason for our um, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, also the carbon footprint. So what we thought we would like to reduce the energy usage. In fact, not only energy and water usage in the seafood industries. So we have done uh, selected few uh, seafood industries. Then we have taken the historical data from them. What was their production? What was the energy usage? What was their water usage? Whether is there any correlation? So we have done a couple of statistical analysis. And then we understood that <clears throat> it is not very easy to find out in the particular process line or the product where the energy is used, how much is used. Because the industry setup is very complex. So what we thought, we will be using a smart energy meters. We will be using a hardware software system. We have a collaborative partner from outside. So with their help, we can able to fix the smart energy meters on the uh, zone wise. Where is the refrigeration side? Where the general purpose side? So we can able to fix the smart energy meters, smart water flow meters. Then with the help of VA and IoT, we will be able to take the real time data. So what is which equipment is running? What is its energy usage? What is the loading? So the loading data will be fed by the industry on a daily basis. So we will be getting the uh, next. So this is how we have done the um, uh, energy sensors fixation. So we have found that freezing load is this much. The cold storage load is this much. Actually, load is this much. Then for that, whatever the compressors are running and all those things. Then we will get the, uh, with the, the industry partner, we can able to get the software like this. So here we can also come to know what is the production for that particular day and what was the energy usage. And also we can get what is the specific energy consumption. That means per kg of production, how much energy has been consumed during the process. Next. Then we have understood 
from some industry, industry one, large scale industry, there is no correlation between the production and the specific energy consumption. Someday, even their production is too much, also the energy consumption is also more. Someday, the production is very less, the specific energy consumption is more. There is no clear cut trend has been seen. Next. Then similarly for water usage in the industry three, that is a small scale industry. So here also we are not able to get any correlation between the uh, the R square, the R, uh, the correlation is very, very less. So here also you can see when the production is very high, the water consumption was less also. Sometimes production is less, water consumption is more. So there was no correlation. Then we, uh, we have, as I told, we have fixed the energy meters. We have fixed the water flow meters with the help of the software available, hardware software system. We were getting the data. Next. So you can see the picture here. The smart energy meters are fixed in the industry and the smart water flow meters fixed in the industries. Next. Then we have made a couple of recommendations for the industries. Next. Uh, next. Then finally, we have developed a mobile alert system for this case also. So on a real time basis, the quality manager or whoever is there, the personnel working there in the seafood industry will come to know on a real time basis, is there any fault? That how we understand, find out based on the historical data, we got the some um, data. Then the present real time data also we got it. Then we made some statistical analysis and understood this particular month for this particular food, uh, the material, whether it's a shrimp or fish, this much should be the energy usage. Also, is there any overloading or the, uh, the particular machine is operated, underloaded? So all those things will be monitored in real time. And then an SMS or an alarm will be going to the, the manager who is there in the industry. So like that, we have developed this. And so we have brought out guidelines, general guidelines, as well as specific energy and water usage gu guidelines for all three selected industries. Next. Then we also work on future refrigeration systems. Generally, the CFC pays out has already completed. The HCFC also now underway. Now, the demand for the refrigeration the seafood industry is very rapidly increasing. So far, that the present HFC is also to be paid down to mitigate the global warming. So, but the issues are the lack of mandate or the regulation on the recovery and recycling of the refrigerants that is being used. Lack of awareness among the refrigerant handlers and the environmental impacts of the fluorinated gases the people are not aware. So also there is no technology available uh, with the servicing enterprises on the recovery of refrigerant recycling of the equipments that is being used in the present day conditions. Also lack of infrastructure for storage and other things. The only way out will be using the natural working fluids, refrigerants such as ammonia, CO2, which has huge potential to mitigate the global warming, also provide the better performance. Next. So one such system we are working here, in fact, it is a collaborative project between uh, uh, India and the Norway uh, Technical University. So we have got uh, three partners, one is IIT Madras, IAEC Bangalore and BITS Plani. So here we are trying to include uh, the CO2 refrigeration system in the marine sector on two areas. One is on the fishing vessel, another one is on the seafood industries. And this system can very well um, meet the requirements of our seafood industries. Also at CAFT, we have got the, the, uh, the, you can see one picture also placed here. We have got the educational training unit at CAFT. Uh, this is working based on CO2 refrigerant only. So this will be made um, operational and it will be kept for demo purpose. Next. The last portion of my presentation is on the entrepreneurship development. So I have actually shown you a couple of technologies, the activities, what we do, but how the eventually these technologies are going to the end users, the stakeholders. So we have got a very good uh, ITMU, ABA, JTMU section here. So basically when any client is coming, for that matter, any fresher folk or entrepreneur is coming to us, we will take them to the, uh, across the campus, we will take them, we will show our technology. If required, we will train them. Especially if you talk about the uh, solar dryers or if you talk about the, fish, uh, the kiosk, we will actually train them for two days or one days. Then after that, there is a provision for them. They can get incubated here. Upon incubation, we are able to provide detailed project report. We can provide the profitability analysis. They can use our dryer, pilot plan, all those things. Then we are also made one uh, setup using the EOI, that is expression of interest we have called for. We have invited the manufacturing agencies from outside. We have conducted the uh, bid meetings and we finalized, ranked the uh, manufacturing agencies and then we have impaneled them. That means if CAFT dryer is there, the design details, 
the all complete technology details will be given to the manufacturer and then he will be fabricating for the users and then he will only supply on behalf of CAFG. We will be only receiving the royalty approximately 5% we will be receiving from them. Then also we will go there for testing, commissioning and marketing also our ABA section will help them. Next. So the, as I told you one profitability analysis I can show you. Uh, we have done it for one such uh, example. Next. You can see it here that the BC ratio is 1.23. That means if you invest at least 100 rupees, you will be getting 123. 123 rupees we will get. And the payback period is only one and a half years. That means within one and a half years, you will be getting back your investment. Next. Then one such installation, the commercialization aspect, one such solar LPG hybrid dryer has been installed at ICR Research Complex for Northeast region at Impal. Next. Then we have installed one more at Alapi, Kerala. Next. Then we have installed one more 60 kg dryer at uh, ICR Siva Bhuneshwar. Next. Then we have also installed 10 numbers of solar tunnel dryers in the uh, Odisha, in the coastal districts of Odisha under different project. Next. Then you can see some of our uh, success stories, technologies, commercialization across the country, not only dryers, the fish descaling machines, the POs. Next. These are uh, some of the uh, installations in the other parts of the country. Next. Then some of the photos showing the inauguration of dryers. Next. Then you can see not, uh, during the incubation process, we can make sure that I am telling one example only on, only on dry fish. When the people have come to us, we have shown the dryer technology. They have got trained. They went to ABA. We have provided them all the facility. We have handled them. Finally, they can have a provision here. They can come here for six months or to one year. They can use our facility, our own dryer. They can take the material, fresh fish here, dry it and take it to the market and see that whether they can market it. If they are able to market, if they are able to get good profit, then they will come back to us through our impound agency. They are ready to take the dryer. So like the dryers, also they will bring out their own brand with their own trade name. They will have their own GST number and FSA license. So such things also happened here. Uh, one of our honorable DG was here. We have um, launched a couple of products from our incubators. Next. Uh, next. This is on the uh, mobile fish vending kiosk. Next. Next. Also, uh, we are uh, not only conducting the local trainings, national trainings, we also conduct in international training programs such as high tech. Then uh, our extension division, AA is division only managing the trainee program. As part of that, we also uh, uh, conduct some uh, demonstration classes for the trainees. One such uh, training we have conducted for the uh, African nationals. And he was here and he has seen our uh, fish, fish descaling machine and operated one. Then he has went back and developed that. So that is shown on the right side top. Also, you can see the left side top figure that is like a bakery. So this is one of the incubators from uh, CAFT for the dry fish production. Then he has went out, taken a dryer, and he has developed a, the dry fish business, the dry fish shop as a bakery type. So all are kept in the glass. When you enter inside, you are tempted to purchase to whatever you want to purchase, you can purchase. So such thing is successfully going on. Next. Then uh, some of the photographs showing the training and demonstrations we conducted CAFT. Next. Next. These are some of the consultancy programs what we offer on. Uh, either on dry fish or the cold storage systems or the kiosk. Next. Some of the media uh, newspaper reports. Next. Next. These are all the brands. Actually, I was telling with these uh, initiatives, we have brought out at least 15 uh, dry fish brands to the market now. This is already available. Some are local, in fact. Also, some people are also. Uh, working on other uh, states also, that they are supplying to the other states also. You can see one uh, ABA Foods, Emma Foods, Venus, these are all our brands. Next, we have a couple, a couple more uh, brands are there in the market. Next. Uh, so uh, this is my final slide of the presentation. So here we also intend to work on the following areas. One is the IoT based application for real time identification of fish species and quality evaluation. Also, Development of hybrid renewable energy systems that you must have seen in our uh, work that we are using the solar system only. So we intend to work now on wind energy also. So we will be integrating the wind for also for dryer and other 
the feed dispenser or the kiosk. Also, we would like to work on the smart uh, fish processing machineries. Uh, one such example we can say automate, automated curry vending machines or automated uh, systems which can smartly, without uh, physically being there, you can able to prepare the food and then give it or such systems also we are in, intending to work. Also, we would like to work on combination processing equipments with hybrid technologies in order to reduce the global warming and carbon footprint. Also, I would like to uh, tell here that for all the students, the researchers who are interested can come to CAFT. We have very good facility here. We have got a workshop. We have got an instrumentation lab. We have a refrigeration cell. We have a CAD room. Also, we have engineering museum. So we have all the facilities to work uh, for the researchers. They can come for research projects. For the undergraduate students, they can come here for the uh, entrepreneurship programs, internship programs. Um, so with this, uh, I am ending my presentation. So thank you, Anandal, for passion listening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Murali, for the informative speech. Now we have exceeded the time. So uh, I request uh, uh, some of the participants, if they have any queries, they can uh, put in their chat, chat box. Mm -hmm. If any queries are there, we, we can discuss. Participants, please tell me if any queries, doubts in the presentation. If no other queries, we can wind up the session. If no queries, uh, then the... So we'll conclude the session with a formal vote of thanks. I request Dr. Dalfia to uh, sign this engineering division to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Nidhu. I feel honored to propose this vote of thanks in the webinar on engineering interventions in post harvest fishery sector, which is organized in connection with the national campaign on fish for health and prosperity. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to our respected director, Dr. Leela Edwin, for her support and the presence during the inauguration of this webinar. Thank you, madam. Also, I would like to thank our beloved HOD, Dr. George Nainan, for his moral support and guidance to organize this event. Thank you, sir. I want to express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Morali, Scientist Engineering Division for his interesting and thought-provoking speech. Thank you, sir, for your excellent presentation. I express my heartfelt thanks to Dean, Director, Principal, or Teaching Faculty of esteemed institutions who encouraged their students to participate in this webinar. Thank you, sirs. Above all, I am thankful to all the participants of this webinar for their presence and contribution to make this event a great success. Thank you. And uh, I would like to express my thanks to AKMU unit of our ICR CAFT question and Srimati Shaila NC for their support to conduct this webinar in a smooth way. My special thanks to all who directly or indirectly helped to make the webinar successful. Once again, I thank you all for your cordial cooperation. Thank you. For further information, participants can visit our CAFT web website. Uh, details are already provided in the chat box and uh, uh, participants, uh, the certif e certificate will be sent to their registered email ID. So once again, thanks to all the participants and speakers. So this meeting is closed. <laughs>